Hey guys, welcome back to DadBot 2.0. My name is Brian and in today's video I'm going to be talking about Rad150 and specifically a side effect I am having from the use of Rad150. Now, Rad150 is a SARM, and I'm not condoning the use of SARMs. Um, I identify personally as a lab rat, and I have the right to do so in this great country. Um, I can identify as whatever I want, right? But you, as not a lab rat, I'm assuming you're not a lab rat, can't take SARMs. They're not approved for human consumption, so I am not condoning the use of SARMs for human use. They're not approved by the FDA, so please don't be taking these yourself unless you also identify as a lab rat, and then you can choose to do whatever you want. Okay, so... Rad150 um, is basically an esterified version of Rad140. The thought behind that is that it can prolong the half-life of Rad140. Uh, most of the forums, if you go online, they just say, you know, there's no point in Rad150. It's just, you know, a marketing hype as far as um, it being better than Rad140. Um, it's esterified, so the half-life is longer, and that's the only benefit to it. And that's not much of a benefit because Rad140 already has a half-life of around 60 hours. Therefore, extending the half-life even more is kind of irrelevant. Um, because at a 60 hour half-life you only have to dose every second day, right? So <clears throat> with the Rad150 I'm doing it a little different. In the past I always did Rad140 30 milligrams every single day for the duration of the cycle and as a result my levels of Rad150 in my body would get significantly high because of this half-life and it stacking on top of itself, right? So to mitigate that, I started out differently with the Rad150. I did 20 milligrams the first day, 30 milligrams the second day, and then I started doing 20 milligrams every other day proceeding thereafter. Okay, so after the first five days is when I really started to notice a difference in the gym. Um, I've talked about this, I think, in another video. I felt almost like I was back on super draw, just a super physiological, felt like a monster in the gym, right? Amazing feeling, could work out for hours on end, um, and it feels great. Um, the feeling I'm having on Rad150 is my favorite out of any SARM so far. And I'm not saying that for marketing purposes, I'm simply giving you my feedback. Now, all that being said, there's a side effect that I'm experiencing from Rad150. I did experience the side effect on Rad140, however, it occurred after about week three on Rad140. And that is that I'm having an extremely hard time ejaculating during sex. It's basically impossible. It feels like I'm right there about ready to ejaculate, but it won't actually come out. Um, and so it's a very aggravating situation to be in. I started experiencing this on Rad150 after day five. Uh, by day six, it was basically, it, it's virtually impossible to get off. And it has been since then. I think today is day nine. So um, I actually did a video this morning with Sam Stolt on this. So if you guys wanna hop over to his channel and take a look at it, um, you can hear us discussing it a little bit more. Basically what it comes down to after doing some research online, as we all know, Rad140 has the ability to shrink a prostate, right? So guys who are running super physiological levels of testosterone and have an oversized prostate can benefit from Rad140 in theory because it would shrink the prostate. And it's been proven before. A lot of guys in the forums online have talked about how when they are on massive steroid cycles, they throw in some Rad140 to mitigate the oversized enlarged prostate, right? They can shrink it back down to normal size. Now, as you guys know, I run TRT year round. So my testosterone levels are in the high normal range of where testosterone levels normally would be. Therefore, I don't have issues with an oversized prostate because my testosterone levels are at the super physiological levels of a typical bodybuilder on cycle, okay? Now, with Rad140 being able to shrink the prostate, like I said, after about three weeks, I was unable to get off during sex. With the Rad150, I started experiencing that at day five, which is significantly faster than I experienced it on the Rad140, which is very interesting. And I talked a little bit about this with Sam this morning on our video. Like I said, you can go to his channel and watch it. I'll put a link in the video description to his channel. Um, the fact that they esterified Rad140 seems to have changed the way that this, the SARM is affecting me. Not only am I experiencing that side effect faster, but I was experiencing a different feeling in the gym than I did on Rad140, which is very, very intriguing. If you guys know of any research about Rad150 specifically and the difference that esterification makes on a SARM, I would love to see that research. I've been online looking for it and I cannot find much in regards to esterification of SARMs, okay? Now, when it comes to anabolic steroids, if you esterify a steroid, an anabolic steroid, it does actually change the way the steroid affects the human body. That's been very well documented. So I'm very curious, since SARMs are non-hormonal, what the esterification actually is doing to change the SARM, because there does seem to be a very clear difference as to how it is affecting me, all right? 
So I hope you guys have subscribed to the channel. If you haven't subscribed already, please do that right now. Like, comment, subscribe, share. It helps out a ton with the algorithm and I appreciate the support. Once again, as you guys know, if you identify as a lab rat, you can go to the link in the video description and save a significant amount of money on any of the companies that I use, trust and recommend. The companies that are not on that landing page, you can find even more of those companies over on my website, dadbod2fit. Um, so go check them out. Thank you guys for watching. I'll see you in the next video. Take care.